Hello. So let's just get started. The important lessons from Thunder Investors. The first one being buy simple businesses in industries with a very slow rate of change. We've discussed this in our University of Berkshire Hathaway video as well, which we'll link here. But essentially, you want to look for businesses which are in industries that are slow moving and also in your circle of competence. We cover circle of competence in almost all videos at this point. So if you haven't checked or you don't know what that is, go check out one of the deep dive videos. Monish Pabrai in his book Dhan the Investor says that your ultimate goal before investing should be to say no. Even Warren Buffett talks about this where Berkshire Hathaway holds businesses such as Wrigley's or Coca-Cola which are in slow moving industries. There is not a lot of things happening in the art of chew. Circle of competence, you know, it's, it's the baseline. So the first filter has to be circle of competence. So if something is not in your circle of competence, it just shouldn't be, it should immediately be dropped from consideration, regardless of the price. So we have to stick to our circle of competence. The next point in Thunder framework is to focus on buying existing businesses. Starting a new business is difficult. There's a lot of work that you have to put in. If you just focus on buying existing businesses, you'll save a lot of work for yourselves. When you're buying a business on the stock market, uh, it's not just a ticker. It is a business and have that, that mindset that you're owning a piece of business instead of just a stock. The third point in the Dhando framework is buying distressed businesses and distressed industries. Monish Pabrai holds a lot of investments in India, which he started buying in 2015-2016 when demonetization occurred because India was a distressed country and a lot of those businesses were in a distressed industries. The entrance point is more important than when you exit. There is a difference between price and value, which we've discussed in previous episodes. Price is what you pay for the business and value is what the business is worth. I think like, for example, when we when I invested in the auto industry in Fiat Chrysler, the industry was distressed, but there had been structural changes to the industry, which made the recovery almost for sure. So, so I think you don't want to be you don't want to be investing where you are making heroic assumptions about magic that management's going to do. I think that's not a good idea. But I think you can uh, you can make investments. Uh, you can see you can see the tread marks to where this is going and where it's going to end up. So uh, so I think that industries industries do get distressed. Even countries that get get distressed. Using the Dhando framework, you've already eliminated a lot of businesses. So now let's look at the remaining seven lessons from the Dhando Investor Framework and see how you can find good businesses. But if you've been enjoying the video till now, please hit the like button. The next idea in the Dhando Framework is to buy businesses with competitive advantage, also known as the moat. You want to buy businesses that have a good moat and a good uh, king who's managing the moat correctly. For example, let's talk about Apple. Apple has a great brand mode they also ha have a very high switching cost because of their ecosystem we're mostly dealing with illusions as far as modes go <laughs> so uh i mean i think the the nature of the nature of capitalism is that capitalism is creative destruction there used to be there used to be only one company that had that was in the dow about 90 or 90 years ago that was in the dow today that was ge and the one company is gone now and like what i just saw in the paper is their new CEO has been unceremoniously been removed. But you can see that even a company like GE basically is having a lot of difficulties. So I think moats, uh, moats get filled in far more frequently and far more quickly than most of us would think they should get filled in. The next idea is bet heavily when the odds are in your favor. If you look at Monish Pabrai's portfolio, you will see that he has very few companies in his portfolio, but he has placed large bets. So if you follow this framework, you won't find many companies. But when you do, you need to place huge bets on them. You can combine this with the idea of cloning from Monish Pabrai as well, which we will cover in this video later on. But you can combine the idea of placing big bets and cloning. Well, I think that when you're cloning, there's a couple of things to look at. One is you want to uh, look at the ideas that are the greatest conviction ideas, where people have put the most money. Uh, so if someone is, uh, for example, an investor who makes, who has a 50 stock portfolio, and nothing is more than 3% of the portfolio, I think there's no point cloning them, because you just can't see 
where they have conviction. But if someone is uh, running a 15 stock portfolio and the top three stocks make up half the pie, for example, then you know that they've, they've got conviction on those. So if you understand something about the way their brains work and their past records and so on, then cloning their best ideas or at least looking at their best ideas as a starting point for research is a very good thing to do. Focus on arbitrage. You want to eliminate any downside risk that you have, even if the upside risk is limited. Warren Buffet has two rules. Number one, don't lose money. Number two, don't forget rule number one. The idea is to make sure your downside is capped and the upside will take care of itself. And arbitrage is the best way to do that. Basically, the, the idea is that entrepreneurs look for uh, arbitrage opportunities. And as we understand arbitrage in markets, uh, pure arbitrage is risk-free. The next idea, buy businesses that are selling at a huge discount. Monish Pabrai always aims for 26% return rate. He does not place bets on companies that will give 5% or 10% return. This acts like a margin of safety. Basically, uh, you make very few bets, uh, you make very big bets, and you make infrequent bets. And you make bets when the odds are heavily in your favor. Basically, uh, the other thing is that, you know, I don't make investments unless we have at least the prospects of a double or a triple of the money in two or three years. And as the amount of money in the portfolio goes down, that number keeps going up. The next point is to look for low risk, high uncertainty business. Okay, uh, heads I win, tails I don't lose much. The idea here is to look for a low risk business in a very high uncertainty area. For example, uh, we can uh, look at Facebook in 2018 uh, during the Cambridge Analytica scandal. It was high uncertainty. Pe people didn't know what actions were going to be taken against Facebook, what kind of regulations, what kind of uh, fines were going to be imposed on Facebook. But it was low risk because the cash cow, the majority of the revenue that was coming from from the internet ad spend that was still intact. The digital spend didn't take a huge hit. Heads I win, tails I don't lose much. And the last idea in the Dhando framework is that it's easier to be a copycat than an innovator. Per the Dhando framework, innovators are very rare and they are risky. So you ignore them. You look for people who have already shown that they can scale and run businesses. In simple terms, why do you want to reinvent the wheel? So the bottom line is that uh, cloning, which I talked about, is a very powerful notion. Unfortunately, no business school professors have ever written, ever written any books on cloning that I'm aware of that are any good. And uh, there are a few books on cloning, but they don't, they miss the point, I think. Bottom line is, that, so, so if you did what Buffett did, uh, what these professors said you should do, what Buffett did. You are already beating the S&P by about 11 percent point, 11, 11 percentage points a year. Most of what Pabrai Funds has done, at least for the last several years, is in, in fact, if I look at my portfolio, almost everything that we own was copied from some other great investor. But please don't tell anyone. Let's keep it a secret, okay? Monish Pabrai calls himself a shameless cloner and it's one of the categories in his free lunch portfolio. We've done a deep dive into the free lunch portfolio and discussed all the 15 stocks, which you can check after this video. Okay, bye. Okay, thank you.